Hi guys and welcome to this video about rates of reaction. Hopefully by now you're happy with these two words, reactants and products. Reactants are the things that react together and products are the things that are made in the reaction. And whenever we, we write equations for reactions there's always an arrow separating the reactants on the left and the products on the right. This video is about rates of reaction, so we're talking about how quickly reactions are happening. And there's two ways in which you can measure the rate of reaction. And those are written down here. So you could work out the rate of reaction by the amount of reactant used up over time. Or you could work out the rate of reaction by the amount of product made over time. And let's think about how these could be looked at experimentally. First of all, if we looked at the amount of reactant used up over time, you can imagine a situation whereby you've got your reactants in a conical flask like this. For example, let's just put this in a scenario if we had something like calcium carbonate and acid in our conical flask. If we're looking at the amount of reactants used up over time, we might want to start off by weighing our reactants. So for example, if we put in here um, 5.00 grams of reactants and then we might want to look at how much reactant is used up over time. So when you start the reaction you have 5.00 grams and if calcium carbonate and acid react they'll produce a gas and that gas will leave the conical flask and because the gas is leaving you're actually having mass escaping out of the top of the conical flask. So what you should see over time is that actually the mass of the reactants decreases. So if we were to weigh this again, we might have 4.96 grams, for example, left in our conical flask. And that shows that if we take 4.96 from 5.00, that 0.04 grams of reactants has been used up. So the amount of reactants used is one thing that we could look at. And if we were to time this, we could then work out the rate of reaction. For example, we could look at 0.04 grams of reactants used up over a minute, for example. So this will tell us by the mass change how quickly this reaction is happening if we were to time how long it takes to lose a certain mass. Now the other way we can look at it is the amount of product made. And if we suggested that the same things were reacting together, so if again we had the calcium carbonate and acid in our conical flask down here, rather than looking at how much reactant is used over time, we could time how long it took to produce the gas that's formed. So if we were to connect this um, to a delivery tube and a gas syringe, a gas syringe is used to collect the gas, I'll just write that down here, gas syringe, and as the reaction produced gas, and in this case it would be carbon dioxide, the plunger moves back and you can read off the bottom how much gas is collected in here. So there'll be a numbers along the bottom um, for, from, for example, 0 to 100 millilitres. And you can read off how much gas is produced. And if you were to time this, you can use this value to work out the rate of reaction. Because here, rate of reaction equals the amount of product made over time. So we could look at the amount of gas produced over time. Obviously a fast rate of reaction will produce a lot of gas in a given time, 
whereas a slow rate of reaction wouldn't produce very much gas over time. So two ways to look at it. Either we can concentrate on how um, much reactant is used up over time, or we can look at how much product is made over the time. And both of these will give us a rate of reaction. In the next video, I'll be talking about specific factors that we can change um, to manipulate, speed up or slow down the rate of a reaction. If my videos are helpful for you, please press the like button below and subscribe to Revision Monkey and I'll see you in the next video.